on the Grammar Channel that you're watching right now, I have over 800 videos that I filmed, edited, and produced myself since February of 2018. Now, within those 800 plus videos, there are multiple videos concerning the conjunction and how it's used in correct sentence structure communication, parse, syntax, grammar. In this video, I am going to attempt to take all of those bits and pieces in those multiple videos and join them together in one convenient place for you so that you can see how a conjunction navigates not only in the domain of fact, but in the domain of fiction. So to begin with, you can see the parts of speech over here. And you can see that conjunction is given the numerical value of zero. Why is that? Because a conjunction maintains a neutral condition of state. It does not modify anything, nor is it modified by anything. In the domain of fact, it connects facts or position modial fact phrases. In the domain of fiction, it, it acts as a bridge or a connector between ones, twos, threes, fours, or any of the five syntax scenarios, which I'll go into in a little bit here. It just depends upon the context of the syntaxing that's going on. That's rule one, rule equal judge mechanics. You have to get the whole picture before you bank your value as a bank banker, as a judge. You have to know what you're doing. You just can't go in and say, well, that's an adverb because it's always an adverb because so-and-so said so. No, you have to know what an adverb is, its function, what it modifies, so on and so forth. Again, I have over 800 videos on here, folks. I give closure to the adverb in many different places. Check out the correct sentence structure playlist for that, and also parts of speech playlist where I do have a video uh, regarding the adverb. So here we go. What is a conjunction? With correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, in the context of that grammar technology, there are two conjunctions, and and or. And is a command or is a choice. Pretty simple, right? And when you syntax in the fiction, the world of modification, that, that rule remains. And and or are the only two conjunctions that you would syntax as a conjunction if they are functioning as a conjunction. Because in the fiction, they may not be functioning as a conjunction, depending upon what comes before them or what comes after them. Again, rule one rule equal judge mechanics. So you can see here, <clears throat> for the two conjunctions, and and or, the forward slash represents the conjunction and, for the and equals for the command, for the or equals for the choice. You may ask, why am I writing it like this? Well, I'm showing you as a correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar tutor that I know what I'm doing. I'm positioning my facts. These colons represent the position lodial phrase for them for the two conjunctions, commas. Commas group facts in correct sentence structure. Two conjunctions is a compound fact, and is a fact, or is a fact. These are facts. The way this would be syntaxed, two conjunctions, well, the, the colon would be syntaxed as five, six. Two conjunctions would be seven, comma, and would be seven. This forward slash, 
would be a zero. This or would be a seven. Are you with me? Five, six, and would be a seven equals five, six, seven. Five, six, seven equals five, six, seven. I would give closure to these in my correct sentence structure dictionary. In other words, there would be an entry that says, for the and of the finite mean is, and then the closure would come after that. So this is what it looks like in correct sentence structure. Now we're gonna go into examples of how these work. So here's a very simple claim. And I've, as David Wood Miller used to say, I've grafted it. So normally to be correct, it would be written from port side to starboard side, from left to right um, for ease of communication. But for knowledge cultivation, I've written it in a graph style so that you can see the positional sequencing is correct. You can see the verb. And you can clearly see the positional, or I mean the lodials, which is the, and then the uh, the facts, and then the conjunction right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to syntax that. Five, six, seven for the claim. Five, six, seven of the facts is two with the knowledge. Five, six, seven and closure zero seven by the claimant. Five, six, seven. I've used and as a conjunction here. So this would be the same thing as writing it this way. And that would be syntax like this. As I said at the beginning of the video, conjunctions um, and the domain of correct sentence structure serves as bridge or connectors between sevens or five, six, sevens, between facts or positional audio fact phrases. And in this scenario, it's between sevens. Can I use this same technique for the conjunction or? Because the forward slash represents the conjunction and. And in correct sentence structure, one and one is one. So you would not be able to use that technique for the or, the forward slash for the or. Now here's another way you can write it. had to get a little bit small with the with the writing here but you see what i'm doing with the knowledge and with the closure and syntaxing that would be seven zero five six seven again like i said at the beginning conjunctions serves as bridges or connectors between sevens or five six sevens and in this case it's five six seven zero five six seven and it would be the same if it was an or it would be with the knowledge or with the closure. Another way to write this would be
with the knowledge and colon space closure, which again, as I showed you at the beginning of the video, the colon represents position lodial phrases. And instead of writing out with the, I put a colon there. In this scenario, this colon represents with the, the position lodial phrase on the port side of the conjunction. So now on the starboard side, it would also be with the, with the knowledge and with the closure. Are you with me? By the claimant and then backwards, you know, for the claimant of the knowledge and of the closure is with the facts by the claim. So going backwards, this would be of the, which this would also be of the, because one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. In the mathematical interface, the widths, the bys, the ofs, the fours, the positionals, four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with, perform the same function as the plus and the minus, minus plus is congruent with minus, four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with in the mathematical interface. But I've done other videos on that, so it's not really pertinent to this one because we're talking about the conjunction here. And I've just given you closure on just about every scenario there is for the conjunction except for the ampersand, which of course you can use the ampersand if you choose. Uh, I think something like that or like that. I don't use ampersands normally. I just write out the word. But you can use an ampersand if you choose. Now we're going to talk about the conjunction and its use in the fiction. Again, we stick with the conjunctions and and or. And I'm going to start with the most basic examples and then move on to some more complicated things. The man and wife ran. A brief um, synopsis of my syntaxing method. For beginners, I start at the end and work backwards. The first step is to credential whether a word is tangible contract or non-tangible contract. And then once you do that, through process of elimination, you can credential and bank which value you would put on it. For example, ran is tangible contract, which means it's either going to be a verb an adjective or a pronoun, tangible contract word would never be an adverb. And because it comes at the end of a sentence, it can't be an adjective because an adjective is a modifier and there's nothing left to modify. So it's either going to be a verb or a pronoun based upon the tangibility or non-tangibility of the word that comes before it. So the word that comes before it is wife and that is tangible. So that means that ran is going to be a pronoun being colored i.e. modified by the word wife. Now we have the conjunction. What's on the other side of the conjunction? Another tangible contract word. That's going to be another adjective. And then the is a non-tangible contract adverb. Because when you have a non-tangible contract word, it's either going to be an adverb, verb, or a pronoun. It would never be an adjective. And also adverbs would not come at the end of a sentence simply because... Uh, it's a modifier and there's nothing left to modify. So that's one example of and. This or that are articles. So again, we start at the end. Articles, is a tangible contract or non-tangible contract? Well, one way to credential the tangibility or non-tangibility of a word is to look it up in an etymology dictionary. And if the nativity root meaning of the word is tangible, 
and it would be syntax as tangible. If it's non-tangible, then you would syntax it as non-tangible. So articles is tangible contract, which means it's either going to be a verb or a pronoun because it comes at the end of a word group or a sentence. It's preceded by the tangible contract word are. So now we know articles is a pronoun being colored by tangible contract are. Now we have that. That is non-tangible contract. So that's going to be an adverb or is non-tangible contract, but it is a conjunction and we credential it as such using the mechanics of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. So that is going to be a conjunction is zero. And then this is non-tangible contract as well. So you have a one, zero, one, three, four. And this conjunction is acting as a bridge, performing as a bridge between this non-tangible contract adverb and this non-tangible contract adverb, which is modifying R into an adjective, which is coloring articles into a pronoun. So there you go. That's another example of how to use a conjunction, or I mean, how you would bank value on a conjunction in a fiction babble plain English sentence. Conjunctions perform as bridges between adverbs, verbs, adjectives, pronouns, or any of the five syntax scenarios, which the five syntax scenarios would be Those are the four syntax scenarios. Adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, pronoun, adverb, verb, pronoun, adverb, adjective, pronoun, adge um, adverb, adjective, pronoun. Now, very important to differentiate between the mechanics of these two scenarios. You would have a one, two, an adverb, verb, but you cannot have two adverbs or three adverbs because an adverb is a non-tangible condition of state. It barely even exists. It's just a, a theory. It's a, it's a wisp of an idea. It doesn't have enough tangibility to maintain modifying itself. And again, I give closure to that in my adverb parts of speech video. However, with the uh, adjective pronoun, adjectives are tangible contract. So you can have as many threes as you want and then a four at the end. And the conjunction would serve as a bridge between any of those five syntax scenarios. Or could serve as a bridge. And we stand tall. Again, we start at the end. Tall, that's tangible. Stand is tangible. We is non-tangible. And is non-tangible. Now, most people would probably do this. But that is not correct. And the reason why it's not correct is because as we credentialed the conjunction at the beginning of the video, it's a bridge between adverbs, verbs, adjectives, pronouns, or any of the five syntax scenarios, but that's not happening here because there's nothing in front of it. So it's not performing its function as a conjunction. So it's gonna be a pronoun. And we all know that nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. In this case, it's an adverb. And if it were a break in the continuance of the evidence, it would look like that. Anything by itself is a pronoun.
he walked and then ran. So we have tangible contract ran, which means it's either going to be a verb, adjective, or a pronoun, depending upon what comes before it. We know that it's not going to be a uh, adjective because it comes at the end. And if there's nothing left to modify, so it can't be an adjective. So through process of elimination, we look at the word that, cup that precedes it. It's non-tangible contract then. So that's going to be adverb dangling participle verb. Why is it a dangling participle verb? Because a verb is thinking and there's nothing left to think about. So it's just dangling at the end there. And then we have a break in the continuance of the evidence with a comma. Then we have the and, walked, and he. So most people would put a zero there. Again, this is not correct because and isn't connecting or abridging anything because there's a break here. You might as well think that that's not even there because this is a break in the continuance of the evidence. This is the end of this word group. So it can't be a conjunction because it's not connecting anything. It can't be an adjective or an adverb because there's nothing left to modify because of this break in the continuance of the evidence. It's come against a brick wall, kind of. It is non-tangible and it's preceded by a tangible contract word. So that means it's going to be a pronoun being colored by tangible contract walked in the past tense being modified by non-tangible contract adverb he. And by the way, a good rule of thumb you can put in your back pocket, um, words that are considered pronouns in the fiction, like he, she, it, they, I, we, those are all non-tangible contract because we don't have closure on what that is. If it said Jason walked and, then Jason is tangible contract and it would be an adjective. But it says he, so we don't have closure on what a he is specifically. So it's not, we don't have a tangible contract with it. It's just a vague idea. That's why it is an adverb. So this is another scenario where and would not function as a conjunction because it's not a bridge between anything. And the last one, the fast and the furious. So we see tangible contract, furious, preceded by non-tangible contract, the, non-tangible contract, and tangible contract, fast, non-tangible contract, the. So furious is going to be a dangling participle verb being modified by non-tangible contract, adverb, the. And, of course, is the neutral conjunction serving as a bridge between these two syntax scenarios, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. It's a bridge between two syntax scenarios in this sense. And it can work the same for 4, 1, 2, which an example would be this. The, the, fast and furious would be syntaxed as. 412, 012, and so on and so forth down the line. You could do many variations on this, which I will leave it to you and your learning construct, your biosphere to learn this on your own. It's definitely, it's definitely an undertaking. It's definitely a commitment to learn this stuff, but I hope I have collected all of the conjunction data that I could that is pertinent to learning how a conjunction works in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, technology, and put, pack them into this video to present to you, my fellow mankind, as a gift. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like. And I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button.
underneath this video there are two tiers of membership uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public once again thank you for watching uh, hit the subscribe button hit the like button turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis there are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel my gift to you my fellow mankind thank you again and I'll see you in the next one